Hello again, welcome along to episode 18 of A View From Section C. Senior is with us, sporting his beautifully crafted new A View From Section C baseball cap. Lazo, yeah. how's it fit? It fits quite nicely. Nice it's and snug. Lovely, yeah. It fits a lot better than Ryan, Buc- it fits a lot better than Ryan Buchanan's, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a bit too tight for his big head. No, he's <laughs> lost it. He does the kill Yeah, fuck. Ryan's lost his heart. <laughs> yeah, no, Ryan's lost his heart. Disney Kemar, he's lost it. Does he mean no? Even got a clue where he's lost it. Yeah. Was so, it was it on uh, the Belfast trip by any chance? No, I don't think it was. No, I don't no. think it was. Um, God, that one laddie... again. I, I don't know where he's I, lost. I don't know. I don't know. Who's Put it this way. It's guaranteed there was an alcohol involved, right? Probably. Guaranteed. Probably. Yeah. And that kind of brings us to my point of I don't know who's worse, him or Billy McGuinness. Oh, fuck. Honestly. Yeah, okay. We, could, we, should actually do, we should actually do a special episode of a view from Section C, the Ryan Buchanan versus Billy McGuinness episode. I'll tell you. <laughs> we, 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 I'll tell you Billy we, on pistol. <laughs> I reckon we can get an, an hour out of the two. I'll tell you. We might, we might get, sh- we might get shut down for all the streaming platforms if we bring oh, <laughs> Billy on. God, <laughs> a couple of belters, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, so, so, but yeah. I've, uh, I might hear we present for him on at the weekend. So, oh, that's nice of you. That's nice yeah. of you. I'm not saying it's a new heart. Right? I just said I've got a wee present for him. You buy a chocolate or bang in the pus. Anyway, oh, yeah, um, well. looking for looking at this week's episode. So, review of the Blaze doubleheader, the home. Game and then obviously the away game on the Sunday with the Flames away game in between. Then we'll preview the Devils clan and Flyers second triple header in a row for us. And then the return of senior versus junior, where senior is in the hot seat tonight. We're back. We are back. So, but I must uh, listen, I'm going to throw my excuses out now, right? (laughs) I've been in work. From half past five this morning, and I just got back in again about 15 minutes ago. So there's the excuses in on that. Okay. And and what's your point, caller? The point is that the the <laughs> mind is good. The mind is just I've been in good. I've been in the library speaking to people, getting people to sign up for the program, you know, been doing this and that. Literally <laughs> logged off. Come on here. Help you set up, and yeah. you know, stop, stop putting excuses on, right? Yeah. The excuses are it now. They're it now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's okay. been an absolute shit fest in there. <laughs> Your wife will confirm that because her, her department had something to do with it. But we'll not go there again. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mention anything. So let's let's move on. Let's look at the review. So, um, Blaze at home on Friday night. So a 4-1 victory for the Stars. Um, the goal from Spencer Dorwich, uh, assisted by Charlie Combs and Gabriel Desjardins at 3.57. Quick fire goal on the power play from Charlie Combs, assisted by Sebastian Benson and Philippe Sanch. 32-36, another power play goal, this time by Michael Poirier, uh, assisted by Gabriel Desjardins and Philippe Sanch again. 41-52, Sebastian Bengtsson obviously has to chip in with a goal. Obviously. Assisted by Timmy Lattinen. And, and I didn't actually realise until I looked at this earlier on, third assist of the night for uh, Philippe Sanch. I'm looking, um, at, I'm looking at it myself and thinking exactly the same. I did not yeah, know that Sanch is zero it. plus three. Yeah. Um, and Luke Ferrara with a consolation goal, 53-20, assisted by Bloodoff and Halbert. Um don't actually think Cummins deserved their goal, to be fair. No. I think Mo no. deserved the shutout on his return, which was great yeah. to see. Um, yeah. Absolutely ecstatic to have Mo, uh, Mo back. And as you say, you know, there's been a lot on social media over the co- the days about it. But it's good that, you know, Mo's got that competition. brithen has got that competition. The two of them could start yeah. a game now. We know that they're both comfortable in starting games and both of them could win games. Um, so it was good to see Mo back from injury. Um, you know... What was your thoughts yeah, on Marzo? On Mo or the Hill or the Hill Night? The game. What was your thoughts on the game? The game. We're in command, eh? 
I, I, I think I'd say that, I can't remember if I said it to you or if I said it to people around me, we actually started that game like we started that Cardiff midweek game where we were yeah. just hitting anything that moved. We hit everything that moved. And that's the right way to go about their business. We laid in the marker and we dominated. And they were not at the races at all. Oh. Not at the races. Far um, from it. I thought that offensively we looked sharp, defensively we looked really, really strong, mm. uh, considering that, that Dryden wasn't playing and then we had the Haas incident and, and he went out. Yeah. But on top of that, standout players for me that night, um, Craig Moore. I thought Craig probably oh. played his, his best game Moore for us since he came back. He was outstanding. Yeah. He was like a leader out there. And even yeah. more so when, when Kyle had to leave the ice, he was like the leader of the decor. I thought he had you know a what? fantastic game. I've always I've, I've always loved Murphy, the way Murphy plays. Um, this season, obviously, started the season with an injury, took a while to get going. Um, but that was the Murphy of the very first star season again, that game. Yeah. I think it's been, his, it's been his best game for us yet this season. Back to the way he was when he first came in. Thought he was absolutely tremendous. Um, yeah, but, totally agree. Yep. Yeah, with with that came the whole defensive core having to step up. Um, yeah. I thought, I know a lot of people. I'll, I'll maybe lunches for saying it, but I thought Quinn O'Brien was outstanding in defense. He, was, he, he played back. really. He played yeah. really well. He done. He done the basics right, and and that's yeah. all you can ask when a forward. Yes. Goes back to play D. It's no easy. It's no. definitely not an easy task. He's obviously done it before. It's not his preferred position, but yeah. he slotted in and he done the basics. But for me, Craig Moore was the guy that talked him through the game again. Yeah, he was. And, he, was and he made it. He was man of the match. He, I thought him. he was. I thought he was. I thought, um, thought Pori was good. Um, obviously, Pori got man of the match. Um, with scored a goal. Um. Defensively solid, uh, you know. You, you could have given it to Sanch with the three assists. Yeah. Um, you, to be honest with you, I thought Charlie run the show. Um, but for me, Mersey was, yeah, Mersey yeah. was completely standout yeah. for the game for me. I, I think, think we said that. I think we said that at the game, didn't we? That when yeah. we always say we guess for the man of the match just before it gets announced, and I think both of us said, yeah, Mersey. Um, yeah. Michael got it, and he probably got it for the goal because it was a. Yeah. It's a better roll goal. And, and how many the times follow through. Yeah, the follow through <laughs> gave it all can can par a celebration, did he? <laughs> but what have we said about Poirier before? When yeah. he's on that blue line, he tends to rush shot it. Yeah. What did we've always wanted we brought Ozos in, he could slap shot it. But Michael just went and showed what he could do. The puck came out, bam, roof of the net. Yeah. Nobody we was saying it. It's like it's it was like pulling. He's very similar to the way Poulin played. Yeah, um, yes, they're very similar. I think, I think Poulin was a bit more offensive and could chip in more with goals. Yeah. Um, but very similar type of player. And I was always wanting that kind of shot from him as well. And by the looks of it, he's got it. And his locker just yeah. use it more. Yeah. Um, I think it was when somebody said that when he went back to the bench after he scored, he, he sort of said to his teammates, what a snipe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also it was the first time that he's managed to get his chant as well. Um, yeah, because obviously yeah. he's not he's not scored at home. He scored away. He's not scored at home, so he got his chant. And I could even see Dryden was uh, having a little nod along to the to the chant and had a wee look around yeah. and a smirk on his face. I say, you know what? He's okay. He's got it now. He's got it. Yeah, um, does he have that? He did well. But yeah, the all yeah. the all played well. The, uh, it was a it was a good team effort. Um, I thought they were backstopped well by Mo coming back. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I know there was a lot of nonsense, a lot of shite on social media. I'm not getting into it. Um, but you're going to get into it. But I'll get into it. No, no. <laughs> coach picked him. Simple as that. The coach picked him. Exactly. That that was yeah. what I was trying to say to everyone, eh? Doesn't matter no, what my good. opinion was of who I thought should have started um, yep. and who should have played over the three games. We've all got opinions, and I agree yeah. with that. We've all got opinions. Some of the things that come out were just pure nasty towards towards Mo. It wasn't the right when it's your own fans that are saying stuff like that. And it was a very small minority, yeah. but it was still said. 
The guy played well, got it, and again, this is why Ryan Bacana gets nimmed and shamed, right? He was the one that says Mo was getting the shot out. I know he fucking I'm not caring, Ryan, if you're listening, I'm not caring if you said it at half past two in the afternoon or if you said it during the game. You said the S yeah. word. And that yeah. was it. You jinxed it for the minute you said it, buddy. I'm sorry. So, but so good win. Just, just to go on that, Ryan, you're not getting your present anymore. Yeah, jam it. That's it. But yeah, no, good win. Um, and it was, you know, it, it was the way we've been performing all, uh, all you know, when we're good patches of the season. You know, yeah. like you say, coming out against that Coventry game was just, uh, the, the Cardiff game was exactly similar to it. Yeah. Um, we were all over them. Didn't give them much. I think they had, what, something like four, four shots. Four, four 11, I think it was 11-4. And then I think it went up to something like 23. 311 at the something end of the like second that. at the yeah, Suns. So it, was, it was just dominant. Um, yeah. and, and can I just add, right, that's the yeah. second game, right, where Stoney has shouted baldy at Danny Stewart before the oh warm-up and he's chirped at Stoney back and they've lost the game. <laughs> so, Danny, stop chirping back at him, right? Yeah. You'll never get up. No. Anyway. There's no good so, so, what's... Two points. Two points. Big discussion. No, get back, get back. Get back. Kyle Haas, what's your okay. thoughts? So, what's your thoughts? I, I can understand the third man in. It's agreed. It's it's an altercation uh, between two players. I yeah. disagree with the ruling though of it being an altercation between two players. It should be two players fighting. Okay. Well, let's this, be honest. This, the two of them were just holding. They say that was they say that was an altercation or two willing combatants. I think they said. Now, I watched it back. I mean, the guy, I think it's the guy, Halbert. Mm-hmm. I don't think he goes towards Charlie. I don't think Charlie's expecting it. And I so, and I think and I think Kyle's had the same reaction as me. Is wait a minute, this guy's jumped him. Yeah. Because to Char- me, Charlie's shot that. that. I don't care if he is. So the original penalty, this is the best bit, the original penalty wasn't called. Okay. So Halbert gave him a little dig in the back Mm -hmm. with the head. I think it was just a wee punch. And then Charlie turned round and digged on me's stick. He full on digged on me's stick. And that's when Fox's hand went up and I thought, I'll call it both ways, man. Jesus. And then the two of them have a wee push at each other. And that's when Haas has jumped in. Um, So I don't agree with the ruling of it, but I agree with the penalty. I think, yeah, I think the penalties are, yeah, I think the penalties are right. Um, I think Charlie and Halbert both got two plus two, I uh, think it was. Yeah, two yeah, two plus two. Two plus two yeah. for Ryan. And Kyle got the third man in. Yeah. Fine. You Get cannot it. argue with that. Get it. That's nope. it. To me, done and dust it. Done and dust it. But now is when it begins to get a bit shit. Yeah. Right. So that the next day, all of a sudden, announcement gets made, he's got a two game suspension. As he's on the bus going to Guildford. Exactly. One for being third man in, mm-hmm. and one for being a repeat offender. So yeah. let's forget about the repeat offender, right? And let's just look at the one match ban for the yeah. third man in. Yeah. What happened to everybody else that's had third man yeah. in penalties all season? Yeah. No bans. Cody Saul, Cody Saul was third man in yeah. in the Guildford game two days prior or a day prior yeah. to it, whenever they played Nothing. Uh, Guildford. Yeah. It, it was it's ridiculous. Yeah, um, I, I don't understand it. As I say, I'm not disagreeing with the penalties that were called during yeah. the game. They were the correct penalties yeah. that were called. Yeah. But and then is, to turn and, round and say you get a match ban, uh, sorry, a one game ban, yeah, for being third man in, right? Yeah. What about every other third man in? Nobody yeah. said no. I, I can't recall anybody getting a one game suspension for being third man in. And yeah. then to add another one on for the repeat offender. Yeah. And this is what I was trying to get across to Aid on Twitter. So, Aid, if you're listening, this is what I was trying to say to you. The game ban for third man in, not consistent with the rest of the league. Correct. The, the game ban for repeat offender, completely understand. Yeah. So it's, right. it's, it's, it's happened before. So, yep. we'll lay a marker down here. We're giving you a game ban for it. Completely fine. Yeah. But need the consistency on the game ban for a third man in. 
that's my argument about about what happened with Kyle is the the original call um as I, and I'll keep saying it no disagree with what the referees have called but yeah. to then turn round the dops to turn round to then turn round and say you're getting a one game ban for being third man in yeah it's ridiculous Sorry, absolutely just ridiculous at, just look at the window there the hail has come on absolutely is it and full force in her broth tonight. Well, if, if I turn around and look at mine, you could probably, if anybody's watching, you could probably see the sun shining right through my window. It's mental. Absolutely yeah. mental. I wonder Slowly why over here. here. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's got to be consistent. And it's quite funny that an old an old lino friend of ours, and he shall remain nameless, um, had mentioned a few weeks back to me about a third man in Actually, I think it was the last time Kyle got called for third man in, in Coventry. And he says, um, I wonder who the referee is for the call, implying a certain referee who called it on Friday night there. It's funny All to right. see the calls. Okay. Um okay. but yeah, same same yeah, same referee right. that called it on Saul, same referee that's called it on yeah. Haas as well. He loves that call. Yeah. And inter- interestingly enough, I think you got the message, I got the message. Yeah, from the best equipment manager in in the league. Yes, he also said the same. It's yes. it's yes. inconsistent in the ban. Yeah, it's inconsistent. Yeah, so Dops, if you're listening, uh, you're fucking get your shit. finger out your arse. Get your finger out your arse and start being consistent. You are shite. Yes. So we shall we'll move, move on. on. Speaking Dude. about shite, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. So. Um, Brithing gets a start in this game um, after obviously three game weekend, so splitting the game, first two games. Alex Ronger gets us off to a great start at 2.32 with an unassisted yeah. goal. And then seconds later, Ian Waters equalises at 2.59. We then go ahead at 6.59 in the power play from Charlie Combs, assisted by Sebastian Benson and Michael Poirier. Then go 3 1 up at 10.54. With an unassisted goal again from Sebastian Bengtsson. 13 31, Ian McNulty scores. 13 49, quick fire again. Turner Ripplinger. Have we seen him play? Is he new? No. So this never is. seen that name this season. Nah. Th- this is a guy. Guilford signed somebody. Oh, the D. The signed somebody. somebody. Yeah. There was, two, there was two players that one Guilford signed, one company signed after the. The transfer deadline, basically, yeah. it was uh, and what it was was they had actually they they guys had, had signed for their teams, but they were sitting waiting on their visas coming the through. Visa coming through. Yeah, I really so did. Guy... So we we would had we had a lot of fun with that name, Rip Winger. Oh, <laughs> the guy the guy chips in with one plus two. Yeah. So again, Ian McNulty at nineteen twenty eight. So that gave Guildford a four three lead. End of the first. Um, yeah. Goalies and defence for both teams on top form in that first period. Um, Levi Cable then made it 5-3 at 29 minutes exactly. So 5-3, going into the last couple of minutes of the game, an empty net goal from Ian McNulty at 58-56. And then, um, unfortunately, used to be one of our own, Mr County jumps in with a goal for himself at 59-29, giving the Guildford Flames a 7-3 victory over the Stars. <sighs> so can be said, head, yeah. I'm sitting so uh, shocking my head here. Eh? What what can be said? It's we always know it's a difficult place for us to go and yeah. play. We've always struggled, and we'll say the same about Coventry. It's always two ranks that we have struggled in, even since the BNL days in 2001 when we first yeah. started. You know, we went down to Coventry that that first season. We won the league. We won the playoffs. And we did not win any games there until the playoff final. Yeah. We lost every away game to them. And then we won every home game. And then the playoffs, we won the away game and lost the home game. And lost home game. And then we blew So but, yeah. we've always struggled in Guildford and Coventry. I don't and know why. Uh, uh, I think because Guildford's a bit of a fucking dump. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've never travelled playing basketball, right? And... You do get bus legs, right? I'm, I'm yeah. not caring what anybody says. You do get bus legs, um, and probably when when we played the, the furthest we travelled was probably 
deepest, darkest airshare to come like in places like that. Um, and you used to you used to struggle at my height. You used to struggle um, with the travel. These guys will be the same. There's a lot of big guys. I just done a camera. Are, are we? No. Are we going right off the bus and getting in there? And then it's are we hanging about too much? Mm-hmm. Is there not enough time? But for some reason. Well, the thing and is, and I'll that. That's the, that's the worrying thing that we went three one up. And then it was like, go, go, and then right before the end. And we've got back to that. If we score, they score within seconds. Or if they mm. score, they score again within seconds. It's just no good enough. And I don't know. I, I just don't care what it is. I don't know what it is. Yeah. We'll, we'll probably touch on it after the company game when we're going about probably fixtures and stuff like that. But I'm worried there. Eh? Um, now, you can me, I'm the ultimate pessimist, but I am worried. About the number of away games that we've got left, yeah. But and 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 the away form is poor. Let's yeah. well, no sugarcoat it. The All only season thing, the away form has been poor. The only thing for me, the, the like, okay, the, the the Cardiff game and the English away games is what worries me. But we've got, and obviously we'll touch on it when we do the preview. But we've got Clan and then Fife this weekend, so Clan might be a difficult one. We're travelling back from Cardiff on the yeah. Friday night, playing on the Saturday, but it's only a short journey on the Saturday to the Sunday to go to Fife. And then we've got Fife away the following weekend as well. So a couple of away games against the Scottish teams, which, you know, hopefully we should be performing in, and especially the rivalry games against Fife. Yeah. Um, You'd like to think so anyway, but yeah. You, you're you're got, a lot more optimistic than me. I must I'm, not, I'm not massively... I really want it concerned, not massively overly concerned by it, but there is that away games, I think mm, okay, you know, away the yeah. way down south games but yeah, yeah so just that uh, uh, it was 5-3 right, yeah, and it could have went, it could have went either way, it was 5-3 and they got an empty netter that, and then they've scored Sort of right away again. So, yeah. was I, I never seen the well, maybe sees the games with Guildford anyway. No. Um, no. So, did the trend pull the goalie again? Was he on his way out and it went and I don't know. But yeah, it was, yeah. it was 5 3 is we, you've always said it when it's come down to empty net goals. It's a lot, it's, it. it's a 5 3 game. We've got to be at 7 3 yeah. and uh, yeah. probably a mere one 5 3 game. So, still, they're, they're still in it. Yeah, it's not, it's not like your Pittsburgh against Detroit and them pumping eleven two. Just <laughs> thought I'd throw that in for yeah, Sheepdog, uh, yeah. Sean Johnston there. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I had to reach out to him on Facebook to make sure he was okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, speaking of pumpings, um, we then going to Coventry oh, the, the next genius. night. And I know, to... I know, I know. Um, so I, I really don't want to be can say in this boy's name so much, but Listen, I've, just no, I've just noticed he scored four. He scored four. What was that? Was, four plus uh, two? Four plus two he was on seven goals. He's yeah. shite. I know. So, but well, I know he's a good player. Ah, he's fucking... No, I quite like him out. So, yeah, Yanni Cavallati on the power play at 11.01. Um, Cavallati then got his second at 18.48. Uh, three nothing up through Luke Ferrara at 23.04. Bonner than up, Kevalati got his hat trick on the power play at 25 25. 5 0 up, Kevalati again on the power play at 26 33. Three, Lawrence, goals in, three goals in three minutes. Yeah, Dylan Lawrence then chipping in against his old side, uh, assisted by Ron Jane Sills at 27 58. Uh, Calvis Ozols then jumps in with a power play goal, assisted by Sebastian Banks and Charlie Combs at 38 52. So we're going in 5-2, thinking, okay, can maybe get a quick goal to start the period, maybe back in it. Um, but no, Evan blood off with a goal at 44-51, and then Dean Gibson at 50-39. So, listen, I know we said we weren't really going to speak about some of the shit that was mentioned, but um, some of the some of the flack that Mo was getting on social media during, during the game at 5-0 down, 
was absolutely embarrassing. The fact that three of the goals were power play goals. Um, just, there's no much a go, it. no much a goalie could do about that when the boys taking penalties after penalties after penalties. It's one thing we've said all season is we need to stay out the box because a penalty kill at the start of the season was very good. It's been decent in the middle of the season, but there's games where you're going up against guys like a blood off Kivalati, um, Brody Reed, you know, guys that score for fun on the power play. Matthew yeah. Wah, Colton Yellowhorn, give them power play chances. They're going to the score best, goals. The best player in the league. Didn't give him yeah, a chance. Oh boy, power play. pick an itch. I'm telling you, listen, Taft's going to be listening to this, right? So I'm going to say it, Taft, we're coming for JJ next year, right? Oh my God, what a player I'd love boys. to see him. See, what a player that's boys. See his performance he, last night. Did he, he score, score three? Hand. He scored three and a shorthanded goal. Uh, <laughs> shorthanded was power play even strength, I think. He had all three. Uh, what a player. What a player. But, yeah. but, Give them and even to score power plays. So if you think about it, start the season... We were no bad. Yeah. Right? But we struggled with injuries. The middle of the season, we got better. Yeah. We had a full bench. Ish. Mm -hmm. We're now struggling for D men. So Kyle never played. Dryden never played. We've got to play Quinn at the back. Okay. Yeah. But he's not a D man. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're getting penalty problems again. And yeah. we're getting absolutely, we're getting annihilated. Absolutely not. Because yeah. the four D-men, five of you rotate Quinn, are breathing out their ass, And it yeah. makes it worse if one of the D-men is actually one of the guys who's taking the penalty. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Poor, so, poor weekend. Box. Poor weekend. Yeah. Uh, uh, to be fair, you know what? I, I think I said... I don't think I said it on the podcast. I think I was more optimistic on the podcast. But I think I was more realistic when I said it to Shannon that We'd win on Friday, yeah. But we'd probably lose the two games Saturday, Sunday, yeah. just with the with the rinks that we're going into that we've always yeah. struggled at. And if we could have took a point from either game, happy days. But I I wasn't expecting. I was I was only ex realistically expecting a two point weekend. I was optimistic of four, possibly five. But yeah, I was so I, I thought yeah. You've you've turned into me there because I was a lot more optimistic. I said it should have been two one and one. Yeah. Um, we are, we're that close to getting to the playoffs, right? We were sitting in fifth, we were, and all we had to do was pick up bits and pieces every place we go to stay in fifth place. You get not on them in the quarterfinal stage and we turn in weekend performances like that. Yeah. Yeah, no good enough. So, no good enough. So but looking at this I say, it kept away for the stuff on social media because I knew what it was going to be like. I actually thought I jumped into a flyers page. That's how bad it was. Or Ar Arabs I Anonymous or something like that. I was, I I was in. Said that and I was in. Mikey and Sinky. It was like, see, yeah, it was like looking at the flyers page. Eh? Um, I'm out here. There, there's, there's one guy on it that's. I'm not going to mention his name, but he, he, he he's like, I don't hate Morrison, but all he ever posts on that page is that Morrison's shit. Priest should be playing. Morrison's shit. Morrison's yeah. shit. And you're like, well, if he didn't hate somebody, you, you didn't be fucking saying it every yeah. single time he plays a game. But yeah, no, it's um, I don't usually comment on things like that, but it's just fucking, it's pathetic yeah. now. Sometimes it really is. Um, that was that was a that was a poor weekend. Poor weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're gonna standings now, then. Okay, we went from fifth, and after yeah. last night's games, we're down to seventh. Yeah. So, still tight. It is really yeah. tight. Let's be honest. Guildford, Guildford on forty-two points, having played two games extra. We are on seventh on forty-three or forty-five games played. Glasgow are a, only a point ahead of us, having played two games extra, and Coventry are only a point ahead of us, having played a game extra. So, again, you know, if we could pick up something, potentially on Friday, um. It puts us right back in the mix in fifth place again. If you beat Glasgow on the Saturday, you you start to put a wee bit of a cushion between them. You play Fife on the Sunday. It could all change again. It, it's it's going to be so tight up until that final weekend of the season on who's qualifying for those that bottom, you know, uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. 
Those, Manchester those for ones. me, Manchester are not out of it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's still yeah. tight for that that eighth They're place. Still. And the fixtures that that we've got, the the form that we're in, Ugh. away from home all season. Yeah, we we've it, got. It, was it th- nine games left? Is that no? Twelve games left. Uh, so it'll be. I think it's nine after the last weekend. I thought it was nine that. I think it's nine after last weekend. I'm pretty sure. But, we'll, but we'll, I think we've only got three home games. Yeah. So, um, it really, really does worry me that we we could finish fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, or even ninth. Um, and the worry is, see, like if like a five, five, we reckon we're we're out of it. They'll have a big say. I think I said it last week. Oh, Fife yeah. will have a big say in who oh, yeah, qualifies they want, because they, want to spoil they parties. But it, it's no case of spoiling parties. They're just playing ice hockey to enjoy themselves. Yeah. They've not got the 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 worry and the stress of trying to, to get into the playoffs. They're just enjoying themselves, and that yeah. is the worst team type of team you could play when you're yeah. trying to fight to get positions for the playoffs. Yeah. So yeah, it's nine games left. So you've got the triple head this weekend, um, which we'll review in a second. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> midweek game against Nottingham on the Wednesday. So that's, so that's three away, one at home. And then you've got five away, five at home. Yeah. And then five at home, Cardiff away, Coventry away, triple header again to end the season. So right. tough run in. Couple of, I think a couple of them are rearranged fixtures, but Jesus, why did we rearrange them for right oh, at the end of the God. season? Um, yeah. Surely, surely other teams would have been happy. Oh, I'm worried, Junior. I'm worried. I'm, I'm worried. worried. I'll worry when it comes to that Fife doubleheader weekend and we're maybe sitting in eighth spot. That's when I'll worry. And I'll worry if yeah. Manchester start picking up points. That's what we've, we've got to hope that they keep lots of points there. Eh? Yeah. Listen, I keep saying it, right? I don't care who we get in the playoffs, as long as we qualify. Because onward day, we can take anyone. Belfast, I probably want, you want to avoid Belfast. Belfast are the best team in the league. But I'd happily take any of the other ones over two legs. If we're on form. If we're on form, yes. If we're on 100%. form, yeah. We kind of go in, whoever we get, we kind of go in, we were, were normal home form which has been really, really good, and then turn in a normal away performance, which will be really, really bad. Yeah. So, looking forward to it then. Devils away, clan away, flyers away. I will not be attending a single one of them. Nope. So, just purely because I hate clan and I hate Fife. Yeah. So. um, Well, my my reasons are Cardiff's too far away. Um. (laughs) Glasgow, don't like really sitting in that arena. I hate and it. Eh? Fife, I get to sell a baller. Yeah. I get to sell a baller in Fife. So. Yeah. So, um, me personally, I'm expecting four points. Okay. I don't think we'll get yeah. it. I'm, a I'm, expecting, I'm expecting four points. I'm expecting a win against Clan and a win against Fife. Okay. That, but that's what I'm expecting. What I think is going to happen is I think we might only come up with two points. Yeah, so I that. think we'll I think we'll beat Fife and that'll be it. Um, I think we'll I think we'll lose in Cardiff. Uh, I think we will lose in Glasgow, yeah. but we'll pick a point up. So I think it'll be an overtime or a penalty, and I think Fife will be exactly the same. I think it'll be an overtime or a penalty yeah. thing. I think, and, it, and it, this is, work. yeah. I've, if you'd asked me this a couple of weeks ago, it would be six point weekend, and it'd been a minimum of four, a minimum of four. But based on what's happened over the last weekend, that we get seven from Guildford, yep. seven from Coventry, and then you're going to want into Cardiff, yep. then Glasgow, then five. It's another triple header. No, yeah. as I'm saying, yeah, as I said, you know, I'm I'm expecting four points, and that's what I expect us to be aiming for is four points from the two yeah. from the three games from the two Scottish games. But I think it will be a two point weekend, I, I, like 
that's what I think minimum we need to come away with is two points. We need to win at least one of them. Um, yeah. But me personally, I think, so. I think we need to win two. We need to win yeah. two and and get the points on the board. Definitely. But you need to get that X on, get that X next to the name, and and get it done. Well, we've always said that about having games in hand. You know, teams have got games in hand. Even even when, like when the season has sort of really started, we we probably played the most league games. Mm-hmm. And teams are like, ah, we've got games in hand, we've got games in hand. Yeah, but you've got to win these games in hand. Yeah. You're better having the points on the board rather yeah. than trying to win games in hand. We're now sort of looking at ourselves thinking, shit, we've got to win games in hand now mm-hmm. to get back up the standings again. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, the yeah. um, we'll, thing is, uh, Kyle's back. Yep. Yeah, hopefully, so he's back for Friday. Yeah, hopefully Dryden's back. Um, yeah, I believe he's game. I believe he has a game time decision. Um, yeah, we need the six. We need the. So. We need the six D men plan. Yeah. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Moonhauer. To see if he oh. suddenly thinks. Yeah. To see if he suddenly thinks that. Oh, I've got rid of Hass it. Has has just came off a two a two game suspension. I reckon he wind him up. Will I get him kicked out? Will I get him banned again? There is no we'll way see. he's going to attempt to wind him up because if he attempts to wind him up, he'll get his fucking head kicked in. Yeah. And that's the polite way of putting it. Yeah. Which would be good to see. So if oh, it does happen, God, yes. yeah, if it does happen, Dibbles normally do do a webcast. Um, Kyle, if you're listening, do it. Just do video. It. <laughs> Just do it. We need it. We need video footage for, for next week's <laughs> podcast of <laughs> Kyle kicking McNally's head in. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I don't think he'll do anything. But listen, let's let's get into something a bit more fun. Let's go on right. a bit more. Oh, let's more get off beat. Let's get off beat. Oh. Senior versus junior. Shit. So, Larzo, I thought, I thought we were. Sh- <sighs> and, and I'm going to do a Winston here. That's it. You are. Shaking yourself. Yeah, I'm not very good at this. Right. So Con- consider right that you've just hit me with this <coughs> about 40 minutes ago. Oh, by the way, we're doing a quiz, and this is what's hey, happening. We, we discussed this last week, okay. Yeah, whatever. Right, so folks, how we're gonna do it is who am I? Okay, so I've got five clues for Larzo. If he guesses it right on his first the first clue. You'll get five points. He guesses it right on the second one, you'll get four points. Right on the third one, three points. Fourth clue, two points. And on the last clue, you'd get a point. Right. If he doesn't get it right, he gets fuck all. Right. So I've got my notepad out because <laughs> I'll need to. Yes. I'll need to take so, notes here. So just to warn everyone that before the show, before we started recording, Shannon gave us both an example of one to see how we got on. And needless to say, we were both pish. <laughs> yeah, but that's because the clues were shit. You know what I mean? I, I did not say that, okay? Because I need my tea tonight. So, yeah. are you ready for your first clue then, Larzo? Yeah, so, but, before we start, the score currently, score currently. is senior 16. Junior, 27. Sorry, sorry, what was that? 16. Uh-huh. 27. Sorry, I, I, you, you keep going quiet when you're saying my score. I don't know why. I'm saying it like I'm, I, I'm, norm, I'm saying everything is normal. Senior, 16. Junior, 27. Junior, like Paddy Lockie, whooshing past you, 27. Yeah. Uh, so I'm John Doe and you're Paddy Lockie. <laughs> Yeah. That's what the score is. GD and Paddy. Right. Right. Here's your clues. Okay. Your Go first on clue. Yep. I was born in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Wow, that's a big clue. He's Canadian. Fuck's sake, that'll help us a lot. I can even tell I'm you. I'm gonna give you the best like, one of the best clues for your first guess, am I? So you get five points. Don't be stupid. Right, born in born in Toronto. Either take Where? a guess or press or say pass. No, no, we we shall guess. I'm trying to think more Canadian. 
<laughs> Brock McPherson. No. Okay. Second clue. I played for the University of Prince Edward Island College. Oh, well, no. Uh, sorry, uh, I say college. It was in the CIS, so obviously the yeah, yeah, yeah. was where Concordia yeah. play. If you get this from this, Lars, I'll be impressed. I remember somebody. I remember somebody at, at Prince Edward. Okay, well, I'm going to go Michael Poirier. He's a GG's boy. He's a, he's Ottawa. He's fucking Canadian. Ah, uh, no. And he was at uni. <laughs> Your third clue. Right. I am a conference winning D-man. Oh my God, I can't remember what our D-men were last year. Never we ever won the conference. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, shit on it. Your ne the next clue will give you, I think. Nah, Junior, I'm shy at this. Let's be honest, right? The D men, when we won the conference. We'll have to start doing like a countdown timer. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. <laughs> um, what, what was his name? Woo. I him. Do, yeah, is it Dozak? Was that his name? Tyson Dozak. Yes. No. Oh, is he even Canadian? Do you even play uh, for the stars? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you even play was for the Canadian? stars? I think he was Canadian, but I don't think. Was he, he there when we won the conference? No, I don't think he was. Nah, see, come what I mean. So your next clue. I have played for both Dundee and Fife. James Isaacs. No. Okay. I didn't realise that either. Yeah. Got see? that one. Nah. Cheating. Final clue. I wore number 77. For oh, the boy. Fuck. Can't remember his name. <laughs> oh, shit on it. <laughs> Absolute shit on it. See, this, this is the good thing about having the YouTube live one as well because Larzo's facial expressions when he starts to struggle is hilarious. I, I know who, I know who you mean. I'll never get it. I'll never get it. But if I give if I give up and you give me his initials I'll probably get it. But ah oh, what the fuck is it If I give me an S no. Ah, oh, fuck! What was it? I could, I could see him. Now we have to. Did, did, did he know here? Did he know here? Long hair. A longish hair, but then he went to find. He got his hair cut. Yeah, see, you came on me. Mhm. Mm uh, I can't give you with the name. No, I know, I know. Um, We've spoke about him on the show before and mentioned that he was Graham Harvey's favourite player and. Graham followed him into the toilets in underground for a picture. I know. I know. <laughs> He's one of the hairiest players. I wouldn't care, not ever. Right, I'm. I'm oh, going no, to. No. I'm, I'm. Listen, I'm. I'm going to say a name, but I, I know it's wrong, right? But then, if you give me the initials, we'll see if we can get it right. Danny yeah. Markovitz. No, the initials are D Q. Dylan Quail. Dylan Quail. Yeah, no, no. Uh, you know what? I, I thought Isaacs. Isaacs. Um, yeah. I remember because I remember Quill going to Fife and thought, oh, that'll be a good one. A wee kind of yeah. Fife one. Yeah, Dylan Quill. Yeah. So, folks, wow. um, we thought this was going to be a wee bit more fun and a wee bit chirpier, but no, Lars was actually shit. leaving the Lars was leaving the podcast nah, even more pissed off than he came on it. <laughs> God. <laughs> for those of for those of you not on the YouTube and watching this, I uh, listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Well, was just three his notebook away and three <laughs> pen on the flare. <laughs> come on, I know. Come on, it's going to be so funny, right? We'll, we'll 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 meet up with people at some point, right? And they'll go, 
Oh, I got that answer dead easy. I know, Ken, I know. Ken, they're all sitting there like Googling it now and going, oh, yeah, Dylan Quill. <laughs> oh, I can't that in. Oh, I remember that. I remember listen, that. I had Dylan Quill. Listen, if Graham Harvey doesn't get that, I'll be very disappointed. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to we're gonna have to get uh, we're gonna have to get Dave to, to sit, sit down and listen to it okay. with him and, and make sure see if he gets it. But, yeah, Dylan Quill is our answer. So <sighs> does that change your score, Lars, this week? Um, yeah, it makes it. Still the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. dear. You you oh. do know now, right? That's you that's you open for some top shite housery when it comes to me for next week now. Right? Is it shite housery? Oh my god, fucking Dylan Quill. I, I gave you that he he, he was a conference right, winning D man. Yeah. How many games in right. Fife? How many games did he play in the, when we won the conference? It'd be lucky if he, he played about three hours, never mind right, three listen, games. Right, listen, I'm start with this pish, right? You said this to me the other, a few weeks back <laughs> about the numbers game, and you've not got anybody who's played one game, and the the guy's <laughs> average was, what, two points a game or something like that? He played one fucking game and had two assists. I actually think it might be three. <laughs> oh, what, three assists? Uh, something like that. Certainly, it was certainly only oh. one fucking game. Uh. Um you know what? I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm googling it's... it for you now, right? Dylan Quayle. Yeah. Dylan Quayle actually played 21 games for us that season, plus the playoff games. Yeah. Okay. So he played. He played about half yeah. the season. So. Okay. I'll give you that. But yeah. So Larzo. Uh, so it's not as easy as what we think, is it? No, it's not. It's, it's a difficult. Can one? It's, it's it, if you think about it, right? It there's, could be, yeah. There's Bond 20 Bond years Bond worth, uh, but it's 20 years worth yeah. of players that we've got. Yeah. 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 But, but, okay. So, yeah. We'll see um, how it goes. So, we'll probably say the score at the end of the season is uh, senior will still be on 16 and junior will be on <laughs> whatever he reaches. Because this is, <laughs> this, this is no going to get any better, I'll tell you. Man. Oh, I know. But, yeah. So, that's that's our show for this week. That's that's us done. A wee bit of senior versus junior back in there, a little bit of a laugh yeah. and at Larzo's expense. But yeah. it, we're off. We're off to the basketball on Friday. Are you, are you coming? Yeah, I'll have to come through and see my mate. See Bill. Yeah, mate, Bill. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, us, us game on Friday. Then. Us, in, us internationalists like to catch up every now and then. Yeah, speak that about that. Your, speak about your major surgery and all that, Pish. Speak about major surgery. Oh, here, Bill said to walk me a major surgery at me. <laughs> You'll yeah. be on his best behaviour because you're there. You'll no shout it as much. <laughs> but, yeah, hopefully next week we're sitting here with a bit cheerier faces on after some after performances. Yeah. Back up the league standings. Um, hopefully closer to that playoff spot yeah. um, confirmation. But, yeah, um, no home but, game. Gonna feel no good. home game. Oh, again, well, it's it's like what 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 happened? What do you actually do at the weekends? I can't Ant and Dex so, so Saturday's well, covered. We Ant and Dex. Well, the, the but, Tigers are at home on Saturday against Paisley. I know that. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't right. know if the Comets have a home game, um, but some local hockey on at the rink if you want to watch it. But if not, enjoy watching the away games on the webcast, or if you're going to Cardiff on a Friday night and. Glasgow on the Saturday, Fife on the Sunday. Enjoy. Cheer loud. Yeah. And bring home the points for me. And we'll see Cheers you again this time next week. Yeah.